Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce. Today we're gonna to be going over Service Cloud. What does Service Cloud do? What are the basic tenets of Service Cloud? And how can you get certified? So Service Cloud is going to cover customer service and customer success and making sure that your customers are being, this is, sounds weird, but making sure that your customers are being serviced in the right way. Um, mostly just making sure that your customers are going to be happy with the customer service if any issues arise and whatnot. Now there are different use cases where you could use this for external customers, you could use this on internal teams. I've set this up both ways to where you can use it to say, hey, our customers are reaching out to us and we need to be able to help them because they're having issues with our product. I've also used this as an internal team where you can say, hey, this feature in Salesforce is not working. How can I make this work? Or I think that this product within Salesforce or this automation within Salesforce would be really beneficial to our team. Both cases can be used. Now, these are not the only cases that you can use it, but these are going to be the most common cases that I've seen for teams. It's either going to be external or internal. Sometimes you'll have partners who can also submit cases, but this is just depending on the scenario where Service Cloud is being used. Now, typically Service Cloud is going to come with Salesforce when you are getting a Salesforce package of Sales Cloud, and then you'll also have Service Cloud. Now, these two clouds can work in tandem. So once you have closed a deal, closed one a deal, then you can move it off to the customer success team or your customer service team to get the client onboarded, to get their packages delivered, and making sure that your customers are happy with the product that they have ordered and received or with the product that you are giving them as a SaaS product. Now let's talk a little bit about the objects of Service Cloud. These are going to be some of the same objects that you find on Sales Cloud, mainly the account object as well as the contact. And these are going to link over to the cases object, which is going to be Salesforce's ticketing system. Now you can also use another object called knowledge, but this feature is an add-on. Essentially it's a way for you to create FAQ articles or help articles to help your customers self serve and to be able to solve their own problems to reduce load on your customer service team on your customer success team. Now let's jump into some of the main features that you'll find on Service Cloud. The first one is going to be Service Console. This is going to be typically its own app within Salesforce. Now this sounds a little confusing if you were new to Salesforce and you're not quite sure what apps are, but apps are a visual way to group different parts of Salesforce. So you might have like a sales section of Salesforce. You might have a marketing section of Salesforce. This is good. The Service Console is going to be for the customer service section of Salesforce. These are going to house different things and can show you different metrics when you first go into the service console. This allows you to see how many open cases there are. It allows you to see which cases are high priority. It allows you to hopefully easily respond to your customers because you can navigate around the service console without having to go searching throughout the vast organization that Salesforce is. Well, let's jump into case management. So cases, like I said previously, are going to be the ticketing system within Salesforce. Now, while cases by itself is pretty bland, as far as an object goes, there's not a lot of different pieces of information. You're just going to be communicating with the person. You have like your ticket number, you have your ticket priority, which can be really important to your workflow and understanding which cases, which tickets need to be serviced first. But where cases really shines is in the different automations that you can add on to cases to be able to manage it better. You can use different things like entitlements and milestones within Salesforce, which helps you to reach your service level agreements with your customers. You can use case escalation rules to help you um, move your cases up in priority to help you meet those SLAs. So let's take an example here. Let's say that you are using Salesforce internally for your IT team. And so you have a ticket that comes in from a high level person and based upon their role within your organization, their ticket is automatically classified as a high priority for your team. And that that particular ticket should be serviced first when it comes to the next person available for servicing those tickets. So what you could do is based upon a number of business hours or based upon uh, the number of communications or a different metric, you can escalate that or notify different people within the organization about this ticket and about this issue. Now this could be used to move different tickets if let's say a low level ticket has been open for longer than a week, then let's move it up to a mid-level priority. So then we're not letting a ticket sit 
sit in the system for weeks, months, years, that is a fairly simple issue to fix. And if it's not a fairly simple issue to fix, then it should be moved on to other teams who have the bandwidth and the knowledge to service that. Another automation that you can do are uh, the different import of tickets. You can set up an email to case where your customers are emailing a certain email. Typically, this is going to be like support at companyname.com. Um, and then it will be going into their ticketing system and then being prioritized based upon the issue. You can also set up a web to case where people are filling out a form and then saying, hey, this is my issue. This is how you get in contact with me and then setting up the automation emails from there to go back and forth between you and the customer to be able to service them quickly and within their priority. But those are gonna be the main hallmarks of the case management system. Another feature that I briefly touched on is going to be the knowledge base. So knowledge is going to be an add-on to Service Cloud where you are able to create FAQ articles or help articles for your customers to self-serve. Or what you could also do is then on those emails that you can send them like, hey, let's have you try this walk through to see if that helps you solve your problem and then we can go from there if it doesn't and if if it does then we can close out this case and problem solved. Typically what I like to use knowledge for is this scenario itself where you can say hey we're getting a lot of questions about how to use this specific product, how to set up this specific thing and then taking that topic or that setup and then you are able to set that up in an FAQ article to reduce the load on your customer service team. This is where reporting comes in really handy to where you're able to understand what type of cases we're getting and how you can reduce the load and create more efficiency within your customer service department. This is also great because it creates a centralized knowledge hub for your customer service agents to then say, hey, these are the steps to go do. Or you can send that knowledge article to the customer for them to go do. Or to just not have to go and Google endlessly and find really random videos on the internet to how to, so how to solve your problem. But this creates a great first step for them to go find what they're looking for. Now, another piece of Service Cloud is going to be omni-channel routing and using omni-channel, which is going to be a way to match your customers and their issues to the right customer service agent, customer support agent, to their needs. Now, you're gonna have customers reaching out through a variety of different means. It could be phone, it could be email, it could be chat, it could be social media. And so, and so this way is a way to uh, consolidate all of that and then get the right customer service agent who is well versed in that channel of communication with the customer as well as with that product issue, then you're able to move it in different directions. Let's say you have three different customer service agents. You have one that's working with the red product, your one that's working with the green product, and one that's working with the blue product. Now, what you could do is you could set this up where, hey, if they mention issues with the red product, then let's route that to the red customer support, customer service person because they have more knowledge in that. Or you could route it to the blue person who has more knowledge in that area. And so that's just generally what Omnichannel does. Now there's a bunch of different customizations that you can do on this to make it right for your scenario and for your use cases, but that's just a basic overview. Now let's talk about how this integrates with different features of Salesforce. Of course, this is going to be work really well with Service Cloud. You might have to set up some automations to get your customers from your Sales Cloud over to your Service Cloud. Now all the information is still gonna be within Salesforce, but the handoff between the two different teams might need a little bit of automation. You would also work with this within communities or experience cloud as it's also known as where you have like an external facing website and you could host all of your knowledge articles over on that experience cloud site. So then your customers can go to that website and look through the help articles first before they come to your customer service agents. This could also be a really great way to set up that web to case where you can have your customers input their issues and then have that go into Service Cloud. You can also use Agent Force, which is a newer feature of Salesforce, to create different bots that are going to 
uh, grab different knowledge articles and try to help your customers before you reach like an actual person to hopefully reduce the load on your customer service team. So there's a ton that you can do with the agent force as well as with the different integrations, just depending on your use case and scenario. Now I do recommend that if you are going to be using it for multiple use cases, like let's say you're using it for both your internal ticketing system as well as an external ticketing system, I would recommend that you, you utilize the different types and record types and the different page layouts that you can use to uh, delineate between the two. So then you're not filling out information or getting them confused because you might have a different internal ticketing team versus an external ticketing team. Like those two could be widely different. Like you could be using an internal for IT and then you could be using external for customer support. Those two teams are very different. And so you don't wanna mix those up. Some of the benefits that you can see when you are using Service Cloud, depending on your setup is going to be enhanced productivity, especially if you're using the different automation tools and you're setting up those up correctly. You can have reduced operational costs because your customers are finding their own solutions. So you don't have to have as many customer support people. You can also have greater support times you would have greater customer happiness and customer satisfaction with using service cloud now let's talk a little bit about the certifications that you can get for service cloud uh, within salesforce if you are an admin or someone who's looking into getting sales cloud certified so i would recommend at least getting your first few certifications so you understand the basic tenets of salesforce which i would recommend to be the associate certification and then getting the admin certification both of these may touch on customer service in a permissions kind of way is what I remember from the certification exams. But beyond that, you would probably look to getting the Service Cloud Consultant certification to show that you have knowledge within Service Cloud and you understand how to use Service Cloud and how to set that up. But with that, that is going to be the basic tenants, the basic use cases of using Service Cloud within Salesforce. Now this can be a really powerful tool if it's set up correctly, if not, it could be a fire <laughs> and you're trying to figure out how to service your customers correctly. But personally, I think that this is a great tool within Salesforce and a bonus, if you're already using Sales Cloud and you're already using the other features of Salesforce, then it's fairly easy to put on Service Cloud on top of that. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like, subscribe. You can connect with me on LinkedIn at Emily Call MBA. The link will be down in the description. You can also check out my Salesforce certification prep courses on Salesforce Upskill, Udemy Business, and LinkedIn Learning. Thank you so much. I'll catch you guys in the next one.